Hey, JMac here in another base code video where I focus on practices to help you improve code readability. Since we read code far more than we write code, improving readability is the best way to improve your code. In today's video, I want to focus on the practice of removing comments. Uh, this is actually a little bit of a controversial one. I've, I've written about it before in some articles, uh, but I think the best thing to do, even though I talk about this more in the field guide, is to just kind of look at it through a code sample. I've actually been focusing on writing uh, this field guide so much these last few weeks, I haven't written a lot of code. So in the last newsletter, I asked uh, any subscriber that was brave enough to share some code with me, uh, and I would kind of uh, hand choose some of them that match practices and uh, clean it up for them. So uh, in this video, I actually have a little bit of uh, WordPress code here and I can tell it's WordPress not necessarily just from the comment talking about WP but also just some of the conventions that are used um, inside of here so for example uh, just the general formatting uh, there's a lot more white space in uh, WordPress's uh, coding standard uh, and the way they format things um, I actually will stray away from that uh, just uh, for the purposes of, of cleaning up this code but if I were to commit this back to um, the code base, I would definitely want to format it. And I could do that actually, um, as I talked about before with the PHP code beautifier. Um, there actually is a default standard um, inside of it. Or, well, not default, but there is a standard available uh, for WordPress uh, that you could format this code in. So uh, before I would commit it, I would format it back. But for now, just so <laughs> it's easier on my eyes, since I'm not necessarily a WordPress developer, um, I'm going to push this back to just the PSR2 so I can kind of look at it. But aside from that, what I want to focus on is uh, comments. And again, the goal here is, is really to try to move away from the comments. This is actually a pretty short piece of code, which is another reason I chose it. It's only about 60 lines or so, but it actually has kind of like a one-to-one -one ratio between comments and code. And to me, I have to say, it's comments are just kind of noisy. It's very difficult for me right now from a readability perspective to zoom right in and start focusing on this code because every single block almost seems to have its own comment wrapped around it, right? Um, you know, it's, it's inescapable um, that your eyes just kind of go there, right? And let's take a closer look at what these comments are doing, right? Um, one of my friends actually uh, at a previous uh, job called, called comments uh, kind of like he would draw them out by calling them the cooking show. Uh, and this I thought was it was kind of a, a funny analogy, but basically if the comments are reading uh, like you would think of a cooking show, right, where it's talking about, you know, oh, check if it's a post and skip out and then preheat the oven and check for the function existence and then assign the post uh, value to a variable. <laughs> if, they, if they're this very, like, declarative telling you what the code is doing um, step by step, they're probably not necessary. Um, comments in my mind really shouldn't exist um, almost at all. I would I would challenge you that if you have a comment, uh, it's really just uh, a signal that the code uh, could be more readable on its own. It could stand alone without the comment. Now, of course, there are some exceptions there. Uh, again, I'm not necessarily extreme that all comments should be stripped out. So, for example, this file has, um, you know, just, just a file header. It has some doc blocks around the functions. Um, those are totally fine. They might serve the purpose of automated documentation. Uh, they might help the IDE that you're using uh, be able to link the code together, uh, help with type hinting or... Uh, you know, auto completion, anything of that nature. So those, of course, um, are helpful in their own right, like they can stand alone. But really, these inline comments are, are where I would push and challenge you to, to see if there's a better way to rewrite them. So let's, let's take a look at this code, because that was kind of what was submitted here is like, how can we clean this up, right? And so let's look at them line by line here. Um, so if we're looking, if we aren't looking at posts, skip out. Okay, so again, does this comment tell me anything that this code itself does not? Um, again, even if I'm not super familiar with WordPress, um, clearly not equal to posts, aren't posts, skip out. Um, you know, that might be a bit of, um, I guess, slang, depending on where you are in the world, but uh, basically return, right? So again, the comment's not telling me anything the code wouldn't tell me directly. 
Uh, it's not telling me why we skip out or anything of that. It's just saying what the code's doing. So I'm going to get rid of it. Uh, if the super cache function doesn't exist, skip out. Same thing. If function not exist, this is the function that doesn't exist, skip out or return. Same thing. It's not telling me anything. If this told me very specifically, hey, uh, this is the method or the function that we need to check for, or this is why we use this function, then maybe this comment would stand a chance. But on its own, as it is right now, it's not telling me anything this code wouldn't tell me already. So. I'm going to get rid of that. OK, we actually reached a line that doesn't have a comment now. Awesome. Uh, but really, this is actually kind of a temp variable for this line. So if we were to just kind of be fair, it would actually look a bit more like that. And now we can start to get into kind of the, um, the body of this uh, callback. Um, so this callback actually happens. This is an action or, or a hook, uh, if you will, for a WordPress event um, where basically when a post is saved, this is going to get called, right? Um, so this is actually, let's see here. Okay, so the comments are actually, at the moment, helpful in this regard. So I'm going to focus on, I'm going to continue to focus on them. So clear the cache for the post itself. So this code block is for clearing the post itself. And then same thing, we find the categories for that post. Uh, it looks like we loop over them, and then we clear them out. Um, so we just clear the cache by calling this same function it looks like. Okay, cool. And then finally, we clear the homepage cache uh, by passing it the site URL with the trailing slash. So that seems to be important with the trailing slash. Again, the comment doesn't tell me why the trailing slash is important. So I don't know, that just kind of begs a question like in my developer brain of like, why do we need the trailing slash? Can I can I not pass the site URL? Is there some kind of special behavior that happens when I don't pass the trailing slash? Clearly, this is capitalized, so it's kind of yelling at me, if you will, um, that we need that trailing slash. But again, it doesn't tell me why. It just tells me what, um, you know, and even a little bit of how, I guess, with the trailing slash. But nothing that the code couldn't tell me. Um, what's being relayed, really, in each one of these blocks, if we look at it, and they're all really the same thing. Uh, it's getting the URL and then it's calling this this cache clear URL um, function. So, and in fact, this, again, just to kind of really draw that out, um, if we made this the homepage URL and did kind of a similar temp variable, you could really see these two lines being pushed um, and repeated each time, right? So yeah, this has a loop around it, but it's still doing the same thing. It's getting that category and then it's clearing the cache. So I want to get rid of all these comments, uh, but I, I don't want to lose uh, some of the context that these are providing, right? It is kind of telling me at, at initial glance what these are doing. So in this case, um, we've reached a comment that actually is, is paraphrasing a bit of the code or, or larger blocks of code um, in a way that's arguably helpful. So I don't want to lose that, right? But I think the code can do it directly, right? I want to read code. I'm a developer. That's what I'm reading first. I want the code to, to tell it to me as best it can. Uh, so let's see if we can do something better here. So let's say uh, clear the cache for the post itself. So clear cache for post. All right. Um, and then what are we doing next? We're clearing the cache for the post categories. So clear cache for post categories. And really what I'm doing here is just trying to write um, really just what these comments are. And I'm not too focused on what the wording is here. Um, I just want to translate these comments to, to code, if you will. Um, these method name or these function names are, are something that maybe um, is a little verbose. Uh, we could probably tweak these to be a bit more programming if those read uh, <laughs> too clearly for you, I guess. Um, but you could say something like clear... Uh, post cache, right? Um, or clear post category uh, cache or clear homepage cache. Um, I'm going to leave the four for now. Uh, that's fine. But I think it's undeniable, though, in either one of those that this uh, is, is far more readable. It's a lot more condensed, and these wouldn't need a comment. I, I would say any kind of comment that will really, no, they don't need a comment at all. Uh, if there were a comment that needed to be associated with what it meant to clear the cache for the post, it would live inside that function, not here. So this is a good enough name for me for now. 
Uh, so that's going to need the post ID and the post ID, which we're getting up here. So we want to make sure to, to pass that down. And the homepage uh, stands alone. It doesn't seem to need the post ID the way these other ones do. So I'm just going to go make these methods. But before I do so, I need to honor um, the kind of prefix that's being used here. So this pec prefix, um, that's, that's a WordPress convention. So as much as it kind of pulls away from that fancy name, uh, I want to I want to keep that. So, so let's go ahead and make these. Uh, so function pec uh, clear cache or post. And we're going to pass that the post ID. Whoops. And we're going to do another one of these. And this is for post categories, right? And then finally, another one for the home page. And I'm just moving this code around now at this point. So I'm basically taking this and I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to leave the comment there to die. <laughs> and let's take this off and just inline it because that temp variable at this point in the game is, is a little bit unnecessary, right? Um, it's only two lines. We can pack this together. I wouldn't always do that, but in this case, we're getting a lot of information from the name, that really verbose name, that there's no reason to uh, also have a variable, you know, to leverage a variable and therefore the variable name to give us more context. There's enough context already in that name. And in fact, this really just becomes a little helper method. Um, so let's do the same thing here. Because of the loop, I'll hold on to this, but you could push that the same way we pushed before and get this a little tighter, uh, if you will. So for example, we could pack that down. We could loop over this directly if we really wanted to. Um, you know, just to tighten that up. But the name of the game is not necessarily uh, less lines of code. What we're trying to do here is remove comments. That's our initial focus. So I'm gonna leave some of that as is. And then I will go ahead and put this back. Uh, that was me just emphasizing the repetitive nature of those lines of code so we can kind of see those grouped together. And then finally, I'll put that down here. And we're only left with the comments. And again, these comments, just to kind of see them before I, I pull them away, uh, for example, all these are doing now is, you know, the same thing of what these names are doing, right? These these function names. And all we've done is really move that code around and put it somewhere else that, uh, you know, kind of abstract it off and then give it an, an, an apt name, right? A, a proper name that's nice, readable. It relays the information that used to be relayed through one of these comments, right? So clear the cache for the post, clear cache for post. I mean, you can't can't deny that that comment is now absolutely unnecessary. So find the categories for this post. Well, that's actually happening down here. So it doesn't make sense to be here anymore. We could move that down here. But again, given the nature and the context and how close all these are together, all, how close those uh, lines of code are and how tight, uh, tightly grouped they are, there's enough information uh, when you get to this point in the code that you should have everything you need to kind of understand what's going on. And same thing, we don't necessarily know why we need this trailing slash. Um, that'd be something that you know I'd want to I'd want to fix uh, if I were going to finalize this code. But for now, uh, since we don't know and it's the comments not relaying it, I'm going to push on and get rid of it. So let's clean up this formatting again just a little bit. So again, basically just helper methods. Uh, but we've gotten this down now to you know, much more condensed. Uh, we can push on and see a few more things here, but just to focus on the comments again, um, all those are gone. This is much tighter, much more readable, minus, so unfortunately, that namespace. But just these little helper functions that we made down here, and this one's really just a wrapper for this clear cache. But if you came into this and you were doing some, you know, debugging, the deeper down the rabbit hole you go, the more context you naturally have as a developer. So if I, you know, knew this callback was misbehaving or there was a bug of some kind and I got here, I can easily read kind of what's going on. Um, you know, I don't have to go through the comments. I'm focusing directly on the code, right? Um, if it's not a post, this isn't the problem. Uh, if this function doesn't exist, this isn't the problem. Okay, uh, now it's clearing the cache for the post. Now it's post categories. Oh, uh, the user reported something with post categories. Um, let's go see what this is doing in more detail. And now I have more detail that I'm specifically focusing on, you know, clearing the cache for post categories. So now what does that mean? So again, comments aren't necessary because I'm naturally going to have the comment, uh, sorry, I'm naturally going to have the context as I go deeper down into the code.
So finally, uh, this one's a dock block, so we'll kind of just leave that alone. But I do want to point out, um, again, just harping on comments here, uh, this actually talks about returning a bool. But if you look at the code a little more closely, there is an if else pairing here, which we could actually as an aside clean up. There's no reason for that else because we're returning directly here. Uh, but this might help reveal the issue a little bit more. Um, and actually, PHP Storm's complaining about it, but it's missing a return statement. Therefore, it's returning null by default. That's what PHP does when you don't return anything. So it's actually going to give null back, not a bool. So this comment's actually incorrect. Um, Maybe this deleted files returns something, I'm not sure. Again, that would be a discussion uh, with the other developers or the original developer, but um, I could do that, but there might be test cases now that don't work, I'm not sure. So I don't wanna change it, but I just wanna point out that um, this is wrong. This comment is outdated. Uh, and then finally, directory not found. What is What directory were we looking for? I'm not too sure. So again, just a probably not cached. Uh, you know, shrug. I, I don't know. Uh, a, a prime example of a comment that actually begs more questions than it answers. So um, I'm not entirely sure what that's about. So I'm going to drop that. Uh, but again, this this method's actually okay. I would I would argue this line's a bit long, but it doesn't necessarily relate to comments. And we'll talk about how to clean that up in in a different video. So. But yeah, I think this was a good example of uh, some code uh, that had a lot of comments, was heavily commented. And again, on the surface, there doesn't seem to necessarily be anything wrong with that, right? Um, they were helpful in, in some extent. But the challenge here is that I want the code to be what's readable, not necessarily um, rely upon comments all of the time. Um, and definitely not to the extent where they're arguably cu cluttering the code. Um, so instead, uh, you know, we can abstract those out, we can move them to another place, which may seem simple and, and kind of um, like we're not doing much, but what really drives it home is, is that we've abstracted it and then given it a, a clear name which provides the context that that comment was providing for us before. So again, oftentimes if you come across an inline comment, the simplest thing to do is uh, to rework the code in a way until that comment is no longer needed. So that's it uh, for this one. I'll have uh, some more user submitted or I guess subscriber submitted code samples uh, in the next video. Uh, but if you have some of your own, definitely um, subscribe to the newsletter and, uh, and then submit those uh, to me because uh, I'll be doing a few more of these as I continue to work on that early edition.